morning in front. So So yeah, so actually we'll start with this document. So we're going to be talking about the abdominal cavity. And specifically, first we'll talk about the GID itself. So the um, gastrointestinal tract from the esophagus all the way to the anus. And then after that, we're going to be discussing the blood supply. We're going to be discussing the accessory organs of the GIT. Like the, then we'll talk small, in a small details about the retroperitoneal structures and the posterior abdominal wall. But mainly, we're going to be focusing most on the organs, or I mean the abdominal cavity itself. So first, before we even start talking about that, it's very important to note what does the abdomen mean? Where does the abdomen come from? From an embryological point of view. So it's very important to note that the abdomen in the embryo is divided into three. It's divided into four gut. Can you guys hear me clearly? Okay, I'll repeat because I feel like my internet has isn't working great today. Um, so as I said, we have the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut, okay? So the abdomen in development in the embryo is divided into three, foregut, midgut, and hindgut. And after that, the foregut and midgut and hindgut each will form organs, or yeah, organs of the alimentary canal or of the GIT, okay? So, one of the things you need to know about these foregut, midgut, and hindgut is that the classification of it makes it so much easier to memorize the blood supply and so on because they all share a blood supply. So there's one artery that supplies the foregut, one artery that supplies the midgut, and one artery that supplies the hindgut. So it's very important to know that, which, are, which organs are in which gut and what's the artery for that. So first, we're going to start with the foregut. And the foregut basically begins in the lower third of the esophagus and ends in the second part of the duodenum. So it's from the esophagus to the duodenum. Okay? Yeah, it's the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, liver, pancreas, and spleen. Okay? These are the organs that count in the foregut. And their blood supply is all from the celiac trunk. All right. So the foregut contains the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, liver, pancreas, and um, spleen. And the blood supply is from the celiac trunk. So if you see a branch of the celiac trunk, it's going to be probably supplying these organs. So the esophagus, we'll talk about each very lightly. This document has a lot of details, but I'm not planning on going into detail with it. I will, I will give you the document, but I'm not going to go into details. So there's the esophagus. And the esophagus, some of the important things about it are the constrictions of the esophagus. So basically, the esophagus itself gets constricted into three areas. Or like there's three areas where the esophagus is constricted and it's not as wide. And you're just supposed to know where those areas are. So the first one is a cervical constriction. And that's basically 
the upper esophageal sphincter, and that that happens in in the pharynx. So when it's formed in the beginning of the esophagus, the second constriction is in the thorax, and it's basically when it's crossed by the arch of the aorta. And this one's the one that actually that's actually important. It's like it's the one where questions usually show up. And there's also a diaphragmatic constriction when it goes through the opening in the diaphragm. But yeah, this is a this is the thoracic one is very important. And like usually the constrictions are an oral question. Not really, you're not really asked anywhere else about constrictions. So just make sure you know in the, the esophagus gets constricted into three in three places. The first one's in the pharynx, second one is when it's crossed by the arch of the aorta, and the third one is in the diaphragm as it as it enters the diaphragmatic opening. Okay. So there's Okay. So Okay, so last thing we mentioned was the constrictions of the esophagus. And we said that the esophagus is constricted into three in three areas um, in the neck or in the cervical region during uh, due to the pharynx and in the thorax, basically due to um, it being crossed by the arch of the aorta and in the diaphragm as it enters the opening. And that these are uh, this is a common question when it comes to oral examinations. Um, there is also the blood supply of the the uh, esophagus. There's the thoracic part that gets its blood supply from the inferior thyroid artery and thoracic aorta. And there's also the abdominal part that gets its supply from the um, celiac trunk, but specifically from the left gastric artery and left inferior phrenic artery. Uh, we'll be talking about the um, branches of the celiac trunk in details after we're done with the organs. Um, so yeah, it's from the left gastric artery. So we've got the venous drainage. The venous drainage, the thoracic part, goes into the zygous vein and the inferior thyroid vein, so it's systemic, while the abdominal part goes into the left gastric vein to the portal vein. And this is also something we're going to be discussing later. We're going to be talking about the areas of portal systemic anastomosis. Um, just wait till then. And innervation is by the esophageal plexus for sympathetic and for the vagus nerve for parasympathetic. Now, one thing you need to just, just memorize it is in the vagus nerve. Oh, okay, sure. Right. Let's go back. So we're going to be talking about blood supply, venous drainage, or innervation. Come on. Yalla, esophagus, part of it is in the thorax, and part of it is in the abdomen, صح? which means that part of it is treated as a thoracic organ, and part of it is treated as an abdominal organ. So the thoracic part gets blood supply and drainage from the organ, the um, artery veins, arteries and veins of the thorax. So it gets an inferior thyroid. And inferior thyroid is to the part that's in the pharynx, okay? So in the neck, the part of the esophagus that's in the neck. While the th thoracic aorta and the zygous vein are draining from the parts that are in the thorax. Tamam? These parts aren't that important. What's more important is the abdominal part. So in the um, abdominal part, the blood supply is from the left gastric artery and left inferior phrenic artery, while the abdominal part goes to the left gastric vein, which eventually goes to the portal vein. And it's important to know uh, in this area specifically, if any organ or any location gets blood supply from both systemic and portal, we call it a portosystemic anastomosis. And the portosystemic anastomosis is a very important clinical um, point that we'll be talking about in details later. I can just for now, just imagine that any old location where a venous drainage haggu is systemic and portal, and free vein, the systemic vein, free vein, the portal vein, I think we can say we have portal systemic anastomosis. Tamam? Then in the innervation, for innervation, we're just gonna be focusing on the parasympathetic. So I'm gonna be telling you, and you just remember that the vagus nerve is the parasympathetic innervation for most of the abdomen. So if you're ever lost, ever don't know what to say, just say vagus nerve. And 90% of the time, you're, you're correct. More than 90% of the time. So just always remember the parasympathetic innervation for most of the abdomen is just the vagus nerve. Okay?
Okay, so next we'll talk about, I'm not going to be talking about lymphatics at all because as I said, we're only talking about the most important things. So next we'll be talking about the stomach. Now the stomach is one of the important uh, organs. So like it's definitely one of the organs where I would put in my time when I'm studying for abdomen because it's not that difficult and the questions aren't that hard but it's easy marks, okay? So the stomach, feet, the fact that it has two borders, a lesser curvature and a greater curvature. So there's this lesser curvature here and this greater curvature here. And it has other structures. So the lesser curvature has an angular notch and it has the, uh, the gastric vessels, while the greater has the cardiac notch. Structures are what it looks like, not that important. What's it, what, some of the important things is the internal structures in the stomach. So internally, the stomach has gastric folds, and these gastric folds are known as rugae, so that's an important thing to know, is that it has gastric folds called rugae. So yeah, this part, really important. Another important thing is to know the parts of the stomach. So the parts of the stomach, we have the fundus of the stomach, which is the part at the, at the top. We've got the body, and we have the pylorus of the stomach, which, form, which is formed of three areas, a pyloric um, antrum, the pyloric canal, and the pyloric sphincter. So these are very important structures, you know. So, and then when the fundus of the stomach, and body of the stomach, or pyloric, or pylorus of the stomach. Well, pylorus itself is divided into three more structures, which are the antrum, the canal, and the sphincter, okay? Now, one of the things about the stomach that you guys should like try to memorize, it's very annoying, I hate it, but and it's, it's usually an area of question, is something known as the stomach bed. So the stomach bed are all the structures that are found behind the stomach, or in other words, any structure the stomach is lying on. Uh, the stomach bed, there are a lot of structures. Sometimes the MCQs, in our year, paper two used to be written, so they used to ask you to list them. You guys don't have that anymore, so thank God. So you don't have to focus too much on it, but it's still a possible area of question. So basically, there's structures that are found behind the stomach. Feet, the diaphragm. You hear left crust in the dome of the diaphragm. It's splenic artery. Body of the pancreas. The spleen. The transverse mesocolon. The left kidney. Left suprarenal gland. The left colic flexure. So it's very annoying to memorize. It's almost impossible actually. I've never actually been able to memorize it. But you guys should just try. It's like imagine the structures that are found behind the stomach. And this is a picture for those of you who are more visual. Behind the stomach, the easiest ones to remember are the spleen, pancreas, kidney. So they're very easy to remember. Like kidney and suprarenal gland. So kidney, adrenal gland, spleen, and pancreas. All of them are on behind the stomach. Then you'll find the diaphragm. And obviously, it's going to be the left one. See the splenic artery. And that's probably it's obvious because the spleen is here, right? And then in the transverse mesocolon and the left colic flexure. So these two. Don't bother too much about them. I can try to memorize the ones that are easy. So as I said, the ones that are pretty much easier to remember are the diaphragm, splenic artery, body of pancreas, spleen, kidney, and suprarenal gland. Like, usually they would bring up a question. Yalla, here's something about the questions had the stomach bed. The easiest thing ever is that sometimes, you know, anything behind the stomach is left, right? Because the stomach is on the left, right? Sometimes they would ask you a question on a stomach bed. We'll put the option of a right thing. 
So that's obviously going to be the, the, the incorrect answer. Um, يعني always remember that the stomach behind it are structures that are on the left. So it's always going to be the left kidney. It's always going to be the left adrenal gland, the left um, whatever. So if the question is mentioning anything about the right, it's not in the stomach bit. And if, for example, the question would be like all of the following are structures behind the stomach except, and it mentions the right adrenal gland, for example, that's definitely wrong. If it mentions the right kidney, that's definitely wrong. So like, just try to remember, Bastiani. Sometimes it, questions are way more easier than you think they are. Um, so yeah, these are the structures in the stomach web. I would still recommend you guys go through it again. Just try to remember it. It's very useful. Yani. It's very important for exams. But any questions so far? Okay, so next we're going to be talking about the blood supply of the stomach. Yeah, the blood supply of the stomach is a lot. And I mean, if you left gastric or right gastric or six short gastric arteries or right or left gastric epiploic arteries. Um, the only thing I, I want to mention I mean, right now is that the six short gastric arteries there are for the fundus specifically. Yani, if they mention the six short gastric arteries and they ask you which part of the stomach they supply, they supply the fundus of the stomach. Tamam? The rest, you should just know their names yani, for now. We're going to be talking about their branching gupida later on. If you have venous drainage, same names, and they go into the portal vein. And as we already said earlier, an erasing diamond to get the vagus nerve. So yeah. We're not going to be focusing too much on blood supply, venous drainage, lymphatic innervation. In the Italian, give them. Okay, actually, let's go into. Yeah, we're going to talk about the duodenum. So, the duodenum, one important thing about the duodenum is that the first two parts of the duodenum are part of the mid gut, high, uh, port gut, sorry. Like in the last two parts of the duodenum are part of the mid gut. So we're going to be talking about the duodenum in two halves. Type a wolf at Kalaman the first or second part as part of the foregut. And then we'll talk about the rest of the, the, the duodenum when we're talking about the midgut. Well, yellow duodenum is also divided into four parts one, two, three, four, based on um, its location. Okay, come on. So the duodenum, you need to know, al-hatan you need to know, is mostly the second part of the duodenum, ham hadi, ham wahid. That's the important one. The rest of the parts of the duodenum are not as important, but we're still gonna go through them. Tamam? So the first part, which is found at the level of L1, so it's here. It's the first part of the duodenum. And it, it basically runs from the right uh, to the right from the pylorus of the stomach. So it's the after the pylorus, the kunma, she was to the right at the level of L1. And as you remember, if you lecture in five, in the level of L1, the had with semiha, a trans pyloric plane, which is basically a, a line that passes right through the pylorus of the stomach to the level of L1. So in the level of L1, you'll find the pylorus of the stomach, and you'll also find the first part of the duodenum. Make sense? So basically, it's found between the greater and lesser amenta. Um, so I don't want to go into too much details here. So um, I'm going to skip that because it's just not important for you guys at the moment. And it would have been more, and there's not that much detail for the final semester, like mid semester four, when it comes to do the number. Then I'm still the second part because it's the more important one. So the second part is the one that goes descending, so it's going downwards. And that, that means it starts at L1 and it ends at L3. It curves around the head of the pancreas, so it's closely related to the head of the pancreas. This is where the head of the pancreas would go. 
and it has important structures اللي هم ال major duodenal papilla وال minor duodenal papilla تمام دي اللي هم very important because they're the openings for the um, pancreatic and bile ducts تمام أهم واحدة هي ال major duodenal papilla which basically is an entrance for the bile duct وال pancreatic duct um, it opens هم سوا they open into حاجة اسمها ال ampulla of batter and they are guarded by sphincter which is known as sphincter of OD or sphincter of ODI you know? so a major duodenal papilla بيدخل شنو بيدخل حاجتين ال bile duct و pancreatic duct ال bile duct و pancreatic duct سوا بيصنعوا ال ampulla of batter and here it's guarded by a sphincter called the sphincter of OD A second one, which is the minor duodenal papilla, just opens the accessory pancreatic duct. Yeah, there's just an accessory pancreatic duct. بيفتح في second, um, في minor duodenal papilla. One thing that's just worth mentioning is that the minor um, duodenal papilla is above the major one. Yeah, that's pretty much a high important need about the um, second part of the duodenum. Our blood supply had the first and second part of the duodenum is from the superior pancreatic duodenal artery, which is a branch of the celiac. So it's four gut. Yeah, the first and first two parts of the duodenum are parts of the four gut, not the mid gut. Cool. But let me get to the interesting part. We're going to be talking about the celiac artery in detail because this is probably one of the most important um, things regarding an abdomen is that you need to properly know your blood supplies. In the celiac, well, superior mesenteric, well, inferior mesenteric, then you need to properly know them. Okay? So the celiac artery divides into three it divides into the left gastric into the splenic, or into the common hepatic. Tamam? Yalla. Al common hepatic, hii tadina talata tani. Tadina hepatic artery proper, right gastric, gastroduodenal. Okay? Then, we'll follow more into the gastroduodenal. The gastroduodenal divides again into three. It gives us the right gastric fluid, the supraduodenal, Superior pancreatic duodenal. Okay? And then the superior pancreatic duodenal gives us anterior and posterior branches. Now we got tiny back up. And then the hepatic artery proper has been a right hepatic or left hepatic. So these are for the liver. And then it's splenic. So the splenic branches, left gastric of the ploic, a short gastric. And then left gastric has been also for dual branches. Okay? So I'm going to repeat this because it's very confusing. Let's only talk about the things that supply the stomach. Come on. So a celiac artery has been a left gastric, which supplies the stomach, right? Has it been a splenic? Well, splenic has been a left gastric, the ploic, or short gastric. Then they're going to supply the stomach as well. And then a celiac is going to give us the common hepatic, which gives us the right gastric, well, gastro you don't know, which gives us the right gastroepiploic. We will keep the cool home, they're supplying the stomach. You know? So, yeah, they will have to supply the stomach for now. You can mention how the supply is spleen. And spleen is just supplied by the splenic branch, which gives us six splenic branches. Look at the spleen. In the tiny liver, a liver has been a common hepatic. A common hepatic has been a hepatic artery proper. And this one's the one that's going to supply the right hepatic and the left hepatic. Okay, so I'm going to repeat everything again because it's very confusing. Let's go to, let's see from a picture. It makes more sense. So, I'm going to hit a picture, okay? 
And this is basically the celiac artery. And the celiac has the branches, okay? I the first thing is a right gastric, sorry, a left gastric. A left gastric has to to supply the gastric, the stomach. Tani the dina hepatic art, uh, common hepatic artery. Okay, yeah, the picture is even more confusing. Sorry, I'll go back up to the diagram. I think the diagram is better. So we're gonna a celiac artery. A celiac artery has a lot of branches, three main branches. These are the bigger ones, the ones that you need to know. The left gastric, the splenic, the common hepatic. They're very important. They're the direct branches of the celiac artery. The left gastric is the stomach or the esophagus. The splenic is the stomach and the spleen. The one that's confusing is the common hepatic. It's called common hepatic, then it's taking the hepatic between the liver, okay, it's also taking other things. So it splits again into three, splits into hepatic artery proper, which just supplies the liver. It splits into right gastric, which supplies the stomach. And then it splits into gastro duodenum, which supplies the stomach and the duodenum. Yeah, and then a celiac artery for the left gastric for the esophagus, and the esophagus, esophageal for the esophagus, celiac chunk for the splenic, when splenic with the short gastric, when left gastric ploic, with splenic branch branches. But then in the common hepatic, we need a hepatic artery proper, which divides into right and left hepatic to give us the the, the liver. To the right gastric, we then with the dinner gastro duodenal. Gastro duodenal, that big branch of the stomach is more right gastric ploic. And then maybe she bag with stomach with duodenum. Bid the hagis my super duodenal, hagis my superior pancreatic duodenal, which becomes an anterior and a posterior. So then they supply the pancreas and the duodenum. The mouth. So the blood supply has the four that kulu. Yeah, it's important to remember. Fitani al mid gut. Okay, so the mid gut begins in the second part of the duodenum, which ends in the proximal two thirds of the transverse colon. Come on. And the artery had the mid gut is called the superior mesenteric artery. Yellow do you know? Well, I don't want to talk much about it because honestly, I feel like it took too much time for no reason. In the third part, in the fourth part of the duodenum, a little bit has to as part of the mid gut. Okay. The third part is the largest part. The fourth part is an important thing about it is that it ends at the duodenal flexure, which is basically the plates. With the duodenum and the duodenum for a uh, joint. The mouth, yeah, at fourth part, at this area, would stop being the duodenum and it starts to be the duodenum. The um, What happens here is that there's this ligament that grabs and hits the fiha at duodenum, at duodenum, at duodenal, duodenal flexure. The area here that's a ligament that's around this area. It's a mean suspensory ligament of the duodenum. Oh, sorry, suspensory muscle of the duodenum, and another name for it is the ligament of trides. So it's very important to know this one. But in the ending of the duodenum, at the beginning of the duodenum, there is a muscle. It's my suspensory muscle of the duodenum. Oh, ligament of trides. So this place basically shows the ending of the duodenum, but the beginning of the duodenum. That's pretty much what you need to know. No, a blood supply has a mid gut. Wait, let's continue. Sorry. 
end of the time, زي ما قلنا when we end at the jejunum, بنبدأ مع jejunum or ilium. إلا jejunum and ilium, I don't want to talk much about them either. We're gonna be be talking بس about حاجة مهمة, which is the differences between the two. يعني what makes a jejunum jejunum and what makes the ilium ilium. تمام؟ دي حاجة important. عندنا the area حقتهم أو location حقتهم. عندنا the wall. عندنا حاجة اسمها vasa recta or arcades. Okay? Basically, the blood vessels حقة the jejunum and ilium. بكونوا بعدين تحت هنا ها and then they start to form connections نسميها arcades and then they form long vessel نسميها vasa recta okay يعني basically عندنا a big vessel and it forms connections كده ده بنسميهم arcades okay and then it forms longer vessels نسميهم vasa recta okay so في vessels فيها longer arcades sorry more arcades Shorter vasorecta. If you have one that less arcades, longer vasorecta. I mean, the more arcades, if we have more arcades, more arcades, more arcades, then the vasorecta will be shorter. There will be less space for vasorecta. But if there are less arcades, there will be more space for vasorecta. Come on, a concept that for that level. Did you get this concept? Based on that, you know, we need to know in the jejunum is the one that's found in the upper left quadrant. It has a thicker wall, longer vasorecta, less arcades. Come on. While well, ilium is lower right quadrant, thinner wall, short vasorecta, more arcades. Come on. Like one way I used to remember it is that I say that the the ilium is less in all. Except vasorecta, and it's in the lower part. It's a thinner or less wall, and it has a shorter vasorecta. So it's in the lower quadrant, has a thinner wall, a shorter vasorecta. And then I just conclude the arcades diminish the vasorecta. While I used to say the jejunum is more, so the jejunum is in the upper, has a thicker wall, it has longer vasorecta. Make sense? If you can't remember it this way, you can you can think of another way to remember it or just memorize it. I can't remember the jejunum and ilium. The differences between them, Shino. Okay. 